Hey, what's going on everybody? It's BDF44 coming at you with another video. Uh, so this is what the deal is. I saw the uh, debut of the big three in Brooklyn. As you've heard me talk about James Harden and the path to Brooklyn and all that good stuff in many videos. Uh, I probably uh, said this several times, but I don't think the Brooklyn Nets are going to be a very good defensive team until they figure out what they're going to do with their roster. Um, they did trade away quite a bit to acquire James Harden, naturally so. That's to be expected. Nobody's upset at that. However, when you do that, you understand that you stranglehold yourself in terms of the flexibility you have with your cap. Meaning, to get better, you're going to have to get creative. And the most difficult thing in the world, <laughs> in the NBA, besides actually playing games, is managing the cap. Uh, especially with things like injuries and situations such as that that can keep things imbalanced. Right now, even though the Brooklyn Nets, I think, can be a prolific offensive team, i got a feeling they're going to have some of the same issues as the old Phoenix teams with Stoudemire and Nash and Sean Marion. And the, that, the, the fact of the matter is, as good as they are offensively, defensively, they're just not going to be any good. Um... KD will help with some of that because he's such a phenomenal defender. But Kyrie Irving and James Harden are not defensive players. Who else on that team is defensive? DeAndre Jordan, not at this stage in his career. Jeff Green, role player, not at this stage in his career. I mean, you start looking down their roster and the rest of the team, you see Joe Harris, he's not a defensive player. Um, you know, they, they don't really have a whole lot of that. And at this point, I don't really see a path to acquiring it. The Brooklyn Nets are a flawed bunch. They have a foundation that they can really build from. But I think they're going to have to make the tough decision. And quite honestly, it would be a mistake to wait to make that decision. Now, I know that James Harden said that he wants to play with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. That's what he signed up for. And I know that's what those guys are agreeing to and all of that. So that makes it very difficult on a guy like Sean Marks, their GM, to do what's necessary to make the team better when you got superstars that are considering uh, what they want for one another uh, in terms of this trio. And this is the, the conundrum that the Brooklyn Nets are faced with. How do you make those guys happy and make them fit? And the answer is, you're going to find out that you can't. Last night was a glimpse of that. <laughs> now, there were some things that could have happened that could have made the Brooklyn Nets um, win that game. It went into overtime against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Colin Sexton went completely off. No shock to me. That's the type of player he is. No, mo no um, He has no limit limitations on his motor he just goes at you when he's feeling it he's feeling it and he's been out with an injury for the last couple weeks so he's been dying to get back on the court a lot of times when players have these type of injuries it forces them to work out more to try to recover from those injuries so he, so they come back in even better shape than you would have expected them to without the injury um, and that's kind of what you're seeing here with this young fella he came back and he looked like he was in peak shape and he had looked like he had been sitting back in a corner somewhere just biting his nails, waiting to get back on the basketball floor, and you finally let him out of his cage. He went off, and he didn't care about no big three, none of that. He was just saying, you know what, someone's going to have to stop me, and none of these guys on this team are going to be able to do it. And he went off. He went completely off, especially in overtime. Uh, he just completely took over the game. I think he walked out of there with 43 points or 42 points. Special performance by a great young player um, who's just getting started. So when they get um, Darius Garland back, look out because uh, the basketball IQ of the Cleveland Cavaliers increased significantly when they picked up Jared Allen and Torian Prince. Uh, they, they are players that Cleveland needed and didn't know that they needed. Uh, because Drummond, as good as Drummond is, he's even better when he has somebody like Jared Allen to back him up to allow him rest, to allow him to not have to force his way into certain matchups that aren't meant for him, things of that nature. Jared Allen is playing some of the best ball of his life. I would personally trade Drummond 
uh, just to assure that Allen can get the playing time he needs because I think that kid's going to be an all-star, and I think he can be an all-star in Cleveland. So that's what I have to say about that team. I've made a whole, um, a couple of videos about the Cleveland Cavaliers, um, but I didn't know Jared Allen and Drummond would be able to play this well together with Nance and those guys. Uh, it's looking great. And one thing about Cleveland before I move on from them is they look like they're having a great time. Their locker room has that light, it seems, in it that, that can make it so that the environment is good. So whatever they got brewing down there, it's working. Kevin Love is smiling and laughing. JaVale McGee smiling and laughing. The young bulls are running around. Larry Nance, they telling jokes on, on uh, Instagram with one another. It just looks like the environment there uh, is one that you want to be in. And that's, that's, that's a fantastic thing. So give those guys in Cleveland a big, uh, big shout out and a uh, whole lot of credit for what they've put together there. Uh, but back to the Brooklyn Nets. So what the Brooklyn Nets have to do is the same thing I've been saying they have to do for a while now. They got to move on from this big three idea. It wasn't any good when they came up with it. James Harden is the player to choose between the two of them, between him and, and uh, Kyrie Irving. You're going to choose KD. Every team is going to choose KD. You don't play with KD like that. But when it comes to those two other players, and that's what they are on this team, other players, you got to pick one. And you got to trade the other one for what, to, for what it is that will make your basketball to team better. And until you do that, you're going to continue to see what you saw last night, which is a team that can really, really go off offensively, but can't guard anybody <laughs> at all <laughs> at pretty much any position. Uh, they, they are really, really bad. Uh, Cleveland dropped 147 points, I think, on them yesterday in overtime. I think that's crazy, man. That should never, ever, ever happen for a team that's playing uh, for a championship. So. Uh, Brooklyn should trade Kyrie Irving and get something back. Defensive players, get some defensive players back. Now, I don't know where you go to do that. Um, and the natural inclination for a team like Brooklyn uh, is to trade Kyrie for picks instead of players. But in this unique situation, I don't care about no damn picks if I'm Brooklyn. Uh, I don't need to be bringing in young players two years from now. That's we can We can revisit two years from now when we get there. You need to be figuring out how to make this team a championship one, period. You don't need to be thinking about nothing else. You have, like I said in a previous video, the foundation for a, uh, a run, like a real championship run with Harden and KD. That's foundation. You don't, you don't need to look far for what you need to get to the finals every single year. They have it, but they can blow it if they keep up with this Kyrie nonsense. <laughs> I'm sorry, he just doesn't fit. And you need his value because within his value is all the pieces you need to make this team the champion that they want to become. Or at least the team that we have to see every year in the finals. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like seriously, they can do that. They have it now. Um, but Kyrie Irving is, is, is a misuse of, of, of value at this point. I mean, it ain't deeper than that. It has little to do with Kyrie Irving at all with the things that have been going on recently or none of that. Kyrie could be a stand-up um, model teammate from here on out. But his style of play, no, that's not what they need. That's not going to make them better. You know, it's not going to make them better. I'm sorry, it just ain't. And, and that's the reality of basketball. And those guys know that. If they if they move them with their heart and their minds and their egos, then they're going to go out there with these three players and they're going to try to do the best they can. And they're going to watch it fail. They're going to watch it fail. All of them know this ain't going to work. These are basketball minds, geniuses even. They know this doesn't work. But they're trying to make it work because they're friends. And this is a mistake that the Brooklyn Nets organization and their brass needs to relieve them of. That's a burden <laughs> that they have for one another that they need to relieve themselves of so that they can get out of their own way and win. And I am telling you, they ain't going to do that right now. Now, look, there are ways with that, with all of that being said, there are ways to somehow make this work. But the problem is, is once again, in order to do so, you got to get lucky in terms of being able to find players that can outplay their value. Probably on the open market, you got to go find some guys 
who may want to get out, come out of retirement. Like that's the type of stuff they need to do to get better because of how strapped they are in the cap. But the ways to make this work that I'm talking about is to have Kyrie come off the bench. He has to play a Lou Williams role. He has to. That's the only way this thing is going to work. That's the only way he's going to be able to do what it is that he does, which is hold the ball, dribble it, dribble it, dribble it, create, drive, kick, score, drive, lay up, drive, pull up, like all the stuff that Kyrie does at his best off the dribble. He's not going to be able to do that in the starting lineup. Not with not with James Harden and Kyrie and um, KD down there. It just it cannot happen. But if you were to move him to the second unit, so he could kind of, you know, have the ball to himself while those two take a breather. Um, this this works, and it works well because then you have a situation where he's killing second units. Those guys are getting breathers. He sits down. They come in, continue to run the score up. And, and they're always, always in a position to be cohesive offensively. However, that don't do anything for you defensively. It does nothing for you defensively. And what you end up having is the most expensive six-man in the league. <laughs> and then, on top of that, you have a roster full of guys that probably should be further down the bench than they are. Because you can't afford nobody else. So... You're, you're asking those three stars to make sacrifices that may not even pan out to anything because if they're not able to stay healthy, they could go as far as out of the playoffs. Like, let's say James Harden goes down with an injury. <laughs> Love KD and Kyrie. They can do many, many things. But with no defensive help around them, first round exit. I'm just being real. They run into the wrong team, they're out of here. And and, it's, and and like I said, if it's just them two and then you build, you take Kyrie's 150, whatever he's making, 150 million, and you go find different pieces, go find like seven players, all of them fitting what it is that you do. Yeah, KD and, 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 and um, Kyrie Irving can help you win. You know, like what they had before they made this trade. Yeah, they can win. <laughs> they can do well. But nah, not, not, with, not with a non-defensive player. ISO player uh, eating up a third of their cap. That mm -mm. that's just the NBA is not set up for situations like this to succeed. That's what the Brooklyn Nets need to understand. That's what those three players need to understand. The NBA has created a defense against this type of thing, and it's called the salary cap. So when you do try to go get your buddies, you have to play with a bunch of scrubs. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is what it is, superstars. You gotta play with a bunch of scrubs unless you do it like Golden State. And that's 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 just they got lucky. The guys that they got just turned out to be superstars. And uh they developed them properly and then was able to get the second best player in the game to come there. Like that's that's a whole lot of luck, man. <laughs> You're not gonna have that happen. So you gotta build properly and and the Brooklyn Nets have tried to cheat themselves way to them cheat their way to a championship twice. We saw them do it with the Celtics, giving away their future and all their picks for 100 years uh, for a bunch of washed-up players that were done. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, those guys were done, man. It was over. You knew it then. But Brooklyn was going to find a way to, to expedite this process, and it failed. Here they go again, doing the same thing. <laughs> same result. <laughs> it's going to be the same result. It's not going to work, man. There's no 0% chance this team, as currently constructed, wins this championship this year. 0% chance. They're not going to win it. Because they're not going to be able to defend us. And if we happen to get knocked off by, say, the Clippers, I think they're going to have a whole lot of trouble guarding them. <laughs> and they're going to have a whole lot of trouble guarding Denver. They're going to have a whole lot of trouble guarding anybody. Philly, Miami. They're going to have a hard time with every single team in the league. And that doesn't mean they're not going to win a lot of games because they are. But if you can't buckle down in a seven-game series defensively, teams are too talented. They're going to find a way to exploit that. And you are going to find yourself in some situations where you're going to be looking uh, from, from the bottom up. You know, your greatness will only get you so far in terms of your offensive talent. Even, even for these three, it's only going to get them so far. I've been watching this game too long. I know better. You need more on complimentary things around him. 
If you get those things, boom, they could be champs. If you don't get those things, it's just three players doing too much. That's what it's going to be, just three players trying to exert themselves too much. And what's going to happen is they're going to tire. They're going to tire. You know, we've seen James Harden, how he goes. When he gets to a point where he's, he's exhausted, he does nothing. Kyrie Irving, when he gets to that point, he's injured. So it's like, KD, it's all on you. And KD's older now, man. He, <laughs> as great as he looks, he's older now. And he's going to be going up against some young bulls who are hungry. And like I said, he's going to need his help. He's going to need help. So yeah, that's what I got, man. The NBA needs to do something about this particular situation yesterday. Uh, there was a play on the floor where uh, there was an offensive foul called. And initially, the, you know, they obviously had called the, co the call as it was. The coach, you know, decided to have to take a look at it. And they overturned it. And they turned it back into a personal foul, regular defensive foul. The issue, though is instead of letting the player go to the line, they had them do a jump ball. No. If you're going to tell all of us that you got the play wrong, then give the result of the foul uh, to the people, to the team, to whom was fouled. You don't, <laughs> you don't take the ball out or, or do a jump ball situation if there's an, a shooting foul being called and you got it wrong. And then you go around and look at it and then come back and overturn it. You know, now they need to go to the line because that was the initial foul. So I think that that's just a simple flaw in the system. I think the NBA needs to take a look at it. It could have made the difference in the game yesterday. It could have been a difference between Brooklyn having an opportunity to go to overtime and not, um, and ultimately cost them the game. So take a look at that NBA, if you will. Obviously, that's something that's a pretty big deal. Big deal. So anyway... Yeah, thank you guys for watching. My name is BDF44. I'll probably have another video or two for you today. It's my off day. I'm enjoying myself. And uh, it's a lot to talk about. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.